Hey crafters, today we are going to crochet this Easter Bunny decor piece. I'm calling it the Double Crochet Easter Bunny because it's a similar idea to my Double Crochet Snowman. So the idea behind this project is that I'm just not a fan of single crochet because it takes longer and you work it so tightly for amigurumi that it sometimes causes pain in my hands, but I still like to crochet stuffed critters. The problem with swapping to a looser, larger stitch like double crochet is the stuffing is visible and it can fall out of the holes. So the solution to this is to stuff double crocheted animals with plastic bags that match the yarn color. Even though the bags are a little bit visible, they blend in because they're the same color and since it's one larger piece of plastic bag, you don't have to worry about it falling out of the spaces between stitches. So that's the idea behind today's project. I do want to mention this project is more of a decor piece versus a toy for kids. And lastly, I'll be using some extra materials like pom-poms and pipe cleaners later in the project to add details to this rabbit. But let's jump into part one for this project. So to crochet my bunny, I'm going to be using this Hobby Lobby I Love This yarn in the color Ivory. And this is a weight for medium yarn. So of course, feel free to use any similar yarn. A somewhat equal substitute would be Red Heart yarn. And I'm going with the color Ivory because that's the color I have on hand. But you can make your bunny in a gray color and stuff it with gray bags from like Bilo or Kohl's. You can make a brown bunny and stuff it with bags from Publix. Or you could go a totally different direction and make like a blue bunny and you could stuff it with, you know, the blue bags that they put cold stuff in. Just go with whatever color you want to make your Easter bunny and try to find plastic bags that you can stuff it with that will blend with the color of your yarn. I'm also going to be using a size H hook which is five millimeters. So to start this project I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to do a chain three to form a ring but you can use a magic circle if you want but I'm going to chain one, two, three and then in my very first chain I'm going to insert my hook and work a slip stitch and make a little ring just like that. So now we're ready for row one. I'm going to teach this pattern using alternative turning chains. If you don't want to learn the alternative turning chain, that's totally fine. Just know that whenever I say alternative turning chain, you will need to substitute in a chain three turning chain and that will count as a stitch. But I'm gonna show you how to do the alternative turning chain in this video and you can click the card up there for more information on that. I personally find that the alternative turning chain gives a really nice seamless look to the project and makes my joins end up really nice. So we're gonna be working in the ring. So to work this first alternative turning chain, I'm going to insert my hook into the ring that we just made, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So what we've done so far is basically like crocheting a single crochet, just we didn't do a turning chain before the single crochet. To complete the alternative turning chain, we're gonna make this one to a height of two. So we're essentially going to stack two single crochet stitches on top of each other. So that was our first one. Our second one, we're gonna find this left vertical strand of yarn. So see how there's a vertical strand right there, vertical strand right here. We're gonna go underneath this left vertical strand, go underneath it from right to left, that's where we're going to insert our hook, then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, much like working a single crochet stitch. That's the alternative turning chain. We're doing these to a height of two, so two single crochets stacked up. If you want to swap out for turning chain, you can either do two chains or three chains, whatever will give you the height of a double crochet. So to finish off round one, we need to work 11 more double crochet into our ring, and that will give us a total of 12 double crochet if we count the alternative turning chain as our first one. So this is my first, just normal double crochet into the ring. My second one, again into the ring, work a third double crochet into the ring, and go all the way around. All right, so I have worked that alternative turning chain. That is this guy right here. It's kind of hidden in my ring here. But this right here is my alternative turning chain. And then I have 11 double crochet stitches after that all work into the ring for a total of 12 double crochet stitches. So to finish round one, I'm going to find the top of my alternative turning chain, insert underneath there, and join with a slip stitch. 
For row two, we're essentially going to work two double crochet in every stitch from the previous round for a total of 24 double crochet. But our first stitch is going to be that alternative turning chain. And we're gonna work this in the same spot where we joined with a slip stitch. So again, to work the alternative turning chain to a height of two, we're going to insert where we want to work the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So kind of like working a single crochet without doing any chain beforehand. Then we're going to stack up with another single crochet right on top of that one. We're going to find this left vertical bar of the stitch we just created and insert underneath there from right to left. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and that creates the alternative turning chain. That's the first stitch and the stitch from the previous row. Now we need to work a double crochet into that same spot. So right there where we joined the previous round and also where we worked that alternative turning chain, I'm working a double crochet. So that'll leave me 11 stitches all the way around. In each of my remaining 11 stitches, I'm going to work two double crochet. So I'm working my first double crochet in the next stitch, then my second double crochet into that same spot. So right now I have four stitches for this round. Stitches five and six, both the double crochets worked into the next stitch. So this is double crochet number five for round two. Double crochet number six for round two is also gonna be worked in the same stitch. And just repeat and go all the way around working two double crochet in every stitch from the previous round. And I'll end up with a total of 24 double crochet stitches. So I've worked my alternative turning chain and then the 23 following double crochet stitches for a total of 24 stitches for round two. Now I'm going to join the same way we did the previous round. I'm going to find the top of my alternative turning chain from the beginning of the round, insert my hook underneath the top of that stitch and join with a slip stitch. And this is the last time I'm going to show the join just because we work the exact same way every single round. So when I say, once you get to the end of the round, join with a slip stitch, do what I just showed you there. All right, now for row three, we are again going to start with an alternative turning chain and we're gonna work that in the same spot where we joined our round. So that's an insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Find the left-hand strand of the stitch we just worked Insert underneath from right to left, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's our first double crochet of the round. In the next stitch, we're gonna work a double crochet, so just a normal double crochet right there. And then in the third spot, we're going to work a double crochet increase, which is where we work two double crochet into the same spot. So that's my first one in that spot, and then a second double crochet into the same spot. So basically in the first three stitches of this round, I've worked four stitches. And now we're gonna repeat this pattern all the way around. I'm going to work a double crochet in each of my next two stitches. So just one double crochet in that stitch, and then one double crochet in the following stitch. And then in the third spot, I'm going to work two double crochet into that stitch. So this is my first one, and then my second double crochet and repeat that all the way around. Two double crochet, then double crochet increase. Two double crochet, then double crochet increase. And once you've gone all the way around, you will have a total of 32 double crochet in this round. And that includes the alternative turning chain stitch. Now round four, we're going to work evenly where we're just going to work 32 double crochet stitches around and we're going to repeat row four for rows five through 11. So rows four through 11 are all worked the same way. So I'm gonna show you row four and then we will jump ahead to row 12. Our first double crochet is going to be that alternative turning chain. Again, worked in the same spot where we joined the round. So I insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, Insert underneath that left strand, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's the alternative turning chain, counts as my first double crochet. This is my second double crochet, and I'm going to work 32 double crochet evenly around, just working one double crochet in each stitch of the previous round. And then once I get to the end of the round, I will join with a slip stitch. So this is rows four through 11 that we're just working 32 double crochet evenly. So I have crocheted rounds one through 11 and we are almost done with the body of our Easter bunny. And now it's time to start going in narrower for the neck and then we will make the head. So round 12, we're going to start with an alternative turning chain. So insert, 
yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, insert under the left strand of yarn, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And my next stitch, I'm just going to work a double crochet. And then in the following stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet decrease. So this is worked across two stitches. I'm going to yarn over, insert in my next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then stop. Then we're going to yarn over, insert into the second spot, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then to finish it off, yarn over and pull through all three. So basically, it's one stitch where it's connected at the base in two spots, but it just has one little spot at the top. And now it's time for our pattern we're going to repeat around. We're going to work two double crochets and then do a decrease. So this is my first double crochet, my second double crochet. Each of these two are worked on their own stitch. And then a double crochet decrease. So yarn over, insert in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and join it all together by yarning over and pulling through all three loops on the hook. And then repeat. So double crochet, followed by a second double crochet, and then work that double crochet decrease across the next two stitches. And then I'm going to repeat that all the way around and join. Now for round 13, we are going to do decreases in all of our stitches. So we're gonna go from 24 stitches in row 12 to just 12 stitches in row 13. But you might be thinking, how do we do the alternative turning chain and a decrease? Because our first stitch needs to be a decrease, so I am here to show you how to do this. What we're going to do is we're gonna start like we normally do the alternative turning chain. So in my spot here, where I've joined the previous row, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Then I'm going to insert in this left strand, yarn over and pull up a loop, but I'm not going to yarn over and pull through two. So that first bit was like the first bit of a normal alternative turning chain. Now we're gonna turn it into the decrease. So once we hit this point, where normally to finish we would yarn over and pull through two to finish the alternative turning chain. Now what I'm going to do is yarn over, insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then to finish it all off, yarn over, pull through three. And that's how we work the alternative turning chain while simultaneously working a double crochet decrease. That's my first stitch. We've got 11 more decreases to go. So these will be normal double crochet decreases where we yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. Repeat that again, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. I'm going to work these double crochet decreases all the way around and then I will join with a slip stitch and meet you back at the beginning for row 14. So I've worked my 12 decreases around 13. As a quick note, if you want to, you can stuff with bags at this point, or you could even have stuffed after row 12. I'm probably gonna wait to stuff until I crochet most of the head as well. And I'll let you know when I pause to stuff. But this is the body of our bunny, and now we're going to work on the head. So now it's time for row 14. We are going to work two double crochet in every stitch of the round. And our first double crochet is of course that alternative turning chain where we insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, insert under that left vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's my first double crochet. We're gonna work a second double crochet in that same spot, which is where we joined the previous round. And my next stitch, I'm gonna work two double crochet. So this is one double crochet, and then a second one in that same stitch there work two double crochet in the next stitch as well. So this is one double crochet, two double crochet, and work two double crochet in all your stitches all the way around. You'll end up with 24 double crochet, and then make sure you join with a slip stitch. 
So I've completed round 14 and now rows 15 through 18 are all going to be worked the same way. We have 24 stitches here from row 14 and for rows 15 through 18, we're just gonna work 24 double crochet evenly around. So again, I'm letting my first double crochet be the alternative turning chain. And hopefully you've got the feel for it right now and probably you're gonna find that you like the stitch in a lot of your projects. So that alternative turning chain counts as my first double crochet, work my second double crochet in the next stitch, third double crochet in the following stitch, and I'm just gonna work double crochet evenly around until I have 24 double crochet and then join, and that will be round 15, and then I will repeat that round for round 16, 17, and 18. So I have worked through row 18, and at this point we're in the home stretch for finishing up the body and head of our bunny. I am going to pause at this point and stuff the body. As I mentioned, I'm stuffing with plastic bags. I'm using white plastic bags because I have whitish yarn. I'm going to inside out my bags though, because see how on this side the prints are really vivid, but on this side not so much. But basically I'm just going to inside out the bags and stuff them on into the body of my bunny. And I'll put another one in there, I think. And of course you can stuff your bunny as densely or as loosely as you want. The nice thing about these bags is you really don't need many because they will open up really well. But of course you can shape it, squish it down, fluff them up. But I think that looks pretty good for the body of my bunny. I'm gonna crochet another round and then I'll stuff the head as well. So round 19 is going to be one of these repeating patterns. We're gonna start with an alternative turning chain, which will count as our first double crochet. Working this the same way I've shown in all the previous rounds. So that's my first stitch, that's my first double crochet, the alternative turning chain. And then the next two stitches, I'm gonna work a decrease into those. So again, working the decrease the same as I showed earlier. Then to end it, yarn over and pull through all three. And then the pattern I repeat around is double crochet, then decrease, double crochet, decrease, and I'll go all the way around and I'll end up with 16 stitches. So that was a double crochet. This is the decrease. And then I'll just keep repeating that around and then I will join and then we will stuff the head of the bunny. So I completed row 19. I'm going to stuff the head of my bunny. And when I'm stuffing it, I'm trying to get any markings on the bag kind of to the inside where it won't be seen. So that way the outer edges match roughly the color of my bunny. I'll probably just do one bag for the head. I did two bags for the body, but we'll probably just do one bag for the head. And of course you can cut the bags down smaller if you find that you need not as much. And you can do like say half a bag or one and a half bags, whatever it gets the look you want with your bunny. So you can see a little bit of the bag through, but it's not super noticeable. And once we add in like some of the little cheeks of the bunny and arms and legs and things, you're not gonna notice it very much. So we are nearly done with the head of our bunny. So let's finish this off. So row 20 is going to be all double crochet decreases. So the first one's gonna be the alternative turning chain double crochet decrease. And then the rest will be normal double crochet decreases I'll show you this again, it's kind of probably being a little confusing how I'm wording that. So in the same spot where we joined, we're gonna start off like we're doing an alternative turning chain. So insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, insert in the left vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, but then stop at this point. Now yarn over and insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and now to bring them all together, yarn over and pull through all three. That's how we do that alternative turning chain decrease. So now for the rest of the way around for row 20, I'm going to do double crochet decreases. So that's yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then join them together by yarning over and pulling through three. And we'll just keep working that around. So pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three, work that all the way around and then join the round. So I've gone all the way around for round 20 and you might not be quite sure where to join so I'll give you a little tip for that. So we did a total of eight double crochet decreases if we count that first one where we did the alternative turning chain version of it. 
So what we can do is we can count along the tops of our stitches and count eight back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, right here. This is six, this is seven, so this is eight, which means that's the top of my first stitch from the round. So I'm gonna insert in the top of that eighth one, join with my slip stitch. And then at this point, I'm going to fasten off, but I'm gonna leave a nice long tail so we can sew this shut. So the top's gonna to look a little something like this. I'm gonna get out a tapestry needle and thread my long tail that I left. And to sew this shut, I'm going to use a method that's really popular. I found this on Planet June's blog. Really great method. I will link to that so you can see her tutorial there. And she's got lots of tips for amigurumi there that are super helpful. But basically, we're going to do this kind of whip stitch, I guess it might be considered, where we go around through the tops of all the stitches and then we cinch it shut. So I'm going to go to the next stitch to the left of where I fastened off. And I'm going to find the front loop only. And I'm gonna go underneath the front loop only of that stitch from inside out. So this is like the inside we're coming outward with the needle. And cinch that up, go to my next stitch to the left, and go underneath just the front loop. Again, coming from the inside outward. Cinch it up, go to my next stitch. Same process, and I'm gonna do this all the way around, cinching it up, and it'll give it a pretty nice close. And I know it's a little hard to see with the white yarn just because the camera doesn't get much contrast, but I will link to that blog post so you can see um, some more pictures that'll help with that, with this technique. Go all the way around, cinching it up, and it's gonna close the top. So at this point, I've gone all the way around, cinching it really tightly. I like to go back underneath the one where I first went under, just kind of guess and feed it through there. Again, cinch it up really good. And then what I like to do is I do like to tie it off and actually make a knot here. You don't necessarily have to do this. You can just feed the tail in through, but I find if I don't tie a knot, over time it loosens up. I'm like, man, I should have just tied a knot from the get-go. So I'm just gonna find a spot right here, go under a strand of yarn, and tie a nice little knot. And then I will feed my tail end into the inside of my bunny. But now I've got my tail untucked in there. I've got this nice clean finish and we have the body and head of our bunny. Now at this point, it really doesn't look like much, but once we start adding in things like the little cheeks and the nose and the ears and the arms and legs, and of course a little cottontail, it will turn out looking like a bunny. But we've come this far, let's keep going and finish adding on all the little details that make this project turn out super cute. Next we need to make two cheeks. So we're gonna have cute little cheeks and we'll use a pom-pom for the nose. Let's go ahead and crochet the cheeks. I'm going to start with a slip knot and putting that onto my hook. And I'm going to chain three to form a ring. So this is one, two, and three. Now that I've chained three, I'm gonna go back to the very first chain, insert my hook through there, and slip stitch to form a ring. And now I'm gonna work inside that ring. I'm again using the alternative turning chain, so I'm inserting my hook into the ring, yarning over and pulling up a loop, yarning over and pulling through two, and then in the left vertical strand here of the stitch we just created, inserting from right to left underneath that, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And that's gonna count as my first double crochet. And now I need to put eight more double crochet into this ring. So this is one, this is two, this is three, seven, and eight. So all together I'll have nine stitches. I'll have that alternative turning chain from the beginning. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to slip stitch in the top of my first stitch of the round to join. Now for round two, I'm just going to work one stitch in every stitch from round one. So in my first stitch, I'm going to work another alternative turning chain, and this will count as my first double crochet. 
So this is my first stitch. And then I'll have eight stitches remaining and I'm going to put one double crochet in each of those. So a double crochet here, double crochet in the next stitch, and I'm going to work double crochets evenly all the way around. Again, I'll have a total of nine stitches. So now that I've worked my last stitch, I'm going to come to the top of my first stitch from the round. I'm going to slip stitch to join, and then I'm going to fasten off and I'm going to leave myself a very nice long tail that we can use to sew the cheek onto the face of the bunny. It'll end up a little something like this. I need to make two of these. Next, I'm gonna show you how I'm making the tail because it's very similar to the way that we just made the cheek. We're just gonna add one more round. Of course, if you don't want to crochet a little floofy tail, you can, of course, make a pom-pom. But if you want to crochet the tail like I'm doing, we're gonna start off exactly the same way that we did for making the two cheeks. So I'm gonna to get to the point where it's like I've worked round two of the cheek, but don't fasten off and I'll show you what we do next. So I work the same process that I did for the cheeks. So I work rows one and two. And if we were making the cheeks, we would fasten off at this point. But since we are making the little tail, we're not going to fasten off yet. So I'm gonna start off by doing an alternative turning chain. And across the next two stitches, I'm going to work a double crochet decrease. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, insert in the following stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. I'm gonna have three loops on my hook and I will yarn over and pull through all three. In the next stitch, I'm just going to work a double crochet and then a decrease. So this is in the first stitch, this is in the second stitch and decreasing that together. And then one more time, I'm gonna work just a normal double crochet in the following stitch. And then in the two stitches that remain, I'm gonna work a double crochet decrease across those. So this is the first part, and this is the second stitch. Go down to three loops on my hook, and I'll yarn over to pull through everything. And then I'll find the first stitch of the round and slip stitch to join. Again, I'm gonna fasten off, but leave a nice long tail so we can sew this on later. Now, I also like to put a little bit of stuffing into the tail. So I'm gonna cut off just a small piece of a bag handle and tuck it down in there. I probably should have stuffed this before I slip stitch to join the round, but it's got enough of a stretch that I can kinda get on down in there. And I think that'll be enough for me to give it a little bit of floof so it doesn't sag but we'll set this off to the side and attach later on. Next up is the arms and we're going to make two. Once more, start by putting a slip knot onto your hook and I'm gonna chain three to form a ring. Again, you can swap out for the magic ring if you prefer. Then I'm gonna go back to my first chain, insert underneath there, slip stitch together, and now I'm ready for round one. So for round one, I'm going to start off with an alternative turning chain as my first stitch. So pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, insert under the left vertical bar, pull up a loop, pull through two. So that's gonna count as my first double crochet. I wanna work a total of eight, so I've got seven more double crochets to go. So this is two, this is three total, this is four, and I'll meet you once I get to the end of this round. All right, so I've worked a total of eight stitches. We started with the alternative turning chain and then seven double crochet. Now I'm gonna go in the top of the first stitch of the round and slip stitch to join round one. Now for rounds two through seven, we're just gonna work evenly. So I'm gonna start off by making my first stitch an alternative turning chain, and then I'll have seven stitches left in the round and I'll put one double crochet in each of them. So double crochet into the next stitch Double crochet in the following stitch. This is the fourth stitch of the round. Double crochet number five. Double crochet number six. Seven. And for my final stitch, this is double crochet number eight. And then to finish up round two, I'm just gonna slip stitch in the top 
of the very first stitch for the round, and I'm going to repeat round two for rounds three through seven. So I'm finishing up round seven. I've just got a few more stitches to go. So this is my seventh stitch of the round, and this is my eighth. So then I'm going to finish the round by slip stitching on the top of the first stitch of the round. Cinch that nice and snug, and we are going to fasten off, and you guessed it, we're leaving a nice long tail for sewing. This is also a good spot to stop and stuff the arm. So I'm just going to cut off a chunk of my plastic bag here and push it on down in there. I may decide I want a little bit more, but you can stuff as much or as little as you want. Oh, that seems pretty good. And again, we'll set this off to the side. Our Easter Bunny is coming together and we only have a few more pieces to crochet before assembly. In part two, I'll share how I made the ears and the legs and then we will put it all together. Until part two, happy crafting.